Something shot this out of a cannon. And here's the answer in one word. It's the resurrection. When you do history, generally speaking, there's two kinds of data you want up front. Early data and eyewitness data. How do you know Paul's an authoritative source? Because Paul's early, he's eyewitness. Paul is in the right place at the right time to be given his right data. I'm only gonna use data today that have two characteristics. Number one, they're multiply evidenced on many, many levels. Since I just did this volume, it's on the evidence for Jesus. I spent 400 pages on these minimal facts. There's only six of them. And most of them have between 15 and 30 evidences for each one. I'm only going to use facts which the critics admit, which is A, because there's many evidences for them, therefore the critics allow them. And I want to argue that from this date in 30 AD up to 36, there are five events which virtually every scholar agrees to. Now let me make something very, very clear. They're not true because scholars agree to them. I don't care how many PhDs they have, how long they've been teaching, what schools they teach in. They're true because the data say they're true. Very hard objections to answer if you're a critic. Number one, James, the brother of Jesus, becomes a believer. This is important. Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 6, John chapter 7, all say the brothers of Jesus were not believers. In fact, John says it explicitly. The brothers did not believe. It's much harsher in Mark 3 and Mark 6. They, the townspeople and the, disciples, and the brothers seem to agree in the text. The townspeople think Jesus is mentally disturbed. The Greek said, says that he was beside himself. Sort of like, I don't know, schizophrenic? Two of you? I don't know, but it wasn't a nice complaint. They thought he was nuts. And the, God, and the disciple, I mean the brothers apparently tried to get him out of the way, so you're not an embarrassment to the family. They're not believers. So what happens? As far as we know, we get to the cross, and James doesn't believe. A few days later is Pentecost, plus 50, 50 days. And there's an event there in chapter 1, right after Jesus ascends, and we call it the upper room. <clears throat> there are about 120 people there trying to digest all of this. But they know Jesus has been raised, and they've seen him go, and presumably he'll come back, but we won't see him, or at least not for a while. Actually, Jesus told his disciples at one point, Luke, you will want me to return. You will want this, and you will not see that day. And so they're sad because he's gone, but they're overjoyed because he's raised. Well, guess who's in the upper room? Mary and the boys. Mm -hmm. And he believes because he saw the risen Jesus. So James, James' conversion is huge, given Mark 3, Mark 6, John 7, which is also scripture. Okay, second point. There's a word in the New Testament, homologia, but deity, death, resurrection was the homologia. Homologia means, again, the earliest message which is most surely to be believed among all of us. This is the center of the Christian message. Okay, third. At this time, there are some what we call creedal traditions. And these creeds are very, very early. Very, very early. How early? Well, some people believe these creeds, these creedal statements, we have many of them in the New Testament. There are dozens in our epistles. Of all the dozens of creedal texts in the New Testament, about 80% of them would be my guess. About 80% of them are on a single subject, what we call the gospel. Minimum, deity, death, resurrection of Jesus. And they hit that theme over and over and over. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. For us there is but one God, the Father, 
from whom all things came and for whom we live, there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. Do you know what's going on here? Scholars are pretty unanimous. This is the Old Testament Shema. It's the Old Testament John 3:16. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Now, think about that Old Testament text. Hear, O Israel, hear, give heed. This is it. The Lord your God is one. Jehovah is referred to by two words, two names. God, Lord. Look what's happening by the time Christians start preaching. They break those two out. God is here, God the Father. And Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the earth-shaking truth that comes from this. Coming out of the gate in 30 AD, the earliest Christology is the highest Christology. In these early Acts sermon summaries that people think, not the book of Acts, but the sermon summaries date to the 30s AD, 30s AD, critics think. Jesus is called Lord. Worship of Jesus starts right away. What shot this message out of the canon from right here? Jesus is dead. Something starts this stuff. It's shot out of a cannon. They were bold. They said we ought to obey God rather than man. They were whipped and beaten up early on in the book of Acts. James, well, Stephen is stoned. He's not one of the 12, but Stephen is stoned. And a few chapters later, James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee, not the brother of Jesus, but the brother of John, is, they think, beheaded. It says he was killed by the sword. Why were they that willing? They were transformed to the point of being willing to die, and some of them did. Something shot this out of a cannon. And here's the answer in one word. It's the resurrection. And then they see him on Sunday. And their emotions and their message exploded. And we have them saying, right here, he's pre-existent, he's seated on God's right hand, and he's to be worshipped. We can take the Old Testament verses that apply to Jehovah and apply them to Jesus. It comes from the creeds. But Bauckham and some others have said, Jesus here in this creed has been brought into the most sacred Jewish statement there is, the Jewish John 3.16. And Jesus is in it now. Here's a great example. One of our, after John 3.16, one of the next few most memorized verses. Romans 10.9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. One of the most exciting ones is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 7. And it starts out like 1 Corinthians 11. And Paul says, I delivered unto you that which I also received. See, if this were modern writing, he'd have to put a footnote here. He said, I got this from somebody else. I'm, this is an ancient footnote. I delivered unto you that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. There's the gospel again. Buried, rose again the third day, and appeared to Peter and the twelve. And in this list, you have two individuals, Peter and James, the brother of Jesus, and three groups, the 12, 500, and a group called all the apostles. The best evidence appearance of Jesus is to the 12. So Luke 24, it's in John 20, twice in John 20, if you, if you count stage two when Thomas is there. <clears throat> it's in the creed. It's in the Acts sermon summaries. And we get this data really early. So a lot of scholars think these creeds were in existence before Paul got to Damascus. Jesus dies in 30 AD. The explosion happens that weekend. It's around for 40 days. The preaching's being taught. Paul's getting angry. Paul hears the teaching. James came to the Lord. Preaching starts. Paul's getting angrier, like when he holds Pete, uh, Stephen's coat and he hears everybody talking about him. And now he's on his way to Damascus, and critics point, put this at unanimously. Don't make a difference if you believe or unbeliever, just be a scholar. 
and they put this event at two to three years after the cross. Two to three years after the cross. And another cannon. Jesus appears out of nowhere to Paul. And Paul becomes a believer. That's a huge event. And it's number four. James, the earliest preaching. Gerrit Ludemann, he just passed away recently, but a German atheist New Testament scholar who said, the preaching of the appearances of Jesus happened immediately after the events. That's homologia. The creeds start. And then the fifth event here, probably it's a majority, several scholars say it's the consensus New Testament view today. It's the consensus New Testament view among critics that when Paul went to Jerusalem, he gives you the date, Galatians 1, Galatians 1, the critics love the book, they'll let you quote it all day long. Paul said he went up to Jerusalem three years later. Paul goes to Jerusalem and Galatians chapter 1. He spends 15 days with Peter and James. Bingo, whose names are in that list? Peter and James and Paul says, last of all, he appeared to me. They're all there for 15 days. Folks, by this date, we have these five events. And they're powerful. They're historical. Critics grant them. You're going to have to look hard to find critics who don't admit any of them. Something shot this out of a cannon. And here's the answer in one word. It's the resurrection. Resurrection. 